Are there Hollywood rules on screenwriting? Is there a screenwriter's rule book? How's it? How's it? This is Chop from Screenplay Prep, and I'm discussing rules for screenwriters. Is there a Hollywood rule book? There isn't. The simple reality for screenwriters is that they're playing on a field in which there are no rules that are set in stone. Screenwriting in the old studio system many decades ago was really catering for a time when technology was quite different, communication was quite different, and particularly the way you built sets and the size of cameras, particularly the equipment, was so much larger that it had an impact on how a scene would work, therefore how you would write it. So typically when we look at screenwriting today and how it's evolved, a lot of things have changed in terms of how you dictate camera movements and the fact that you do dictate that at all. It was so necessary in the old days that when you read an older screenplay, they read quite differently to today's screenplays. Of course, in the old system as well, where there may have been staff writers, there were way fewer screenwriters than there are today. Now it has become much more of a competitive industry. There are way more studios and networks available to write for. It's a kind of a free game for anyone who can submit and be lucky enough to then get an agent or someone to read their script. But the point is, there's so many more screenplays arriving on desks today than there ever were, which has necessitated a change in how they are presented to make them more readable. The big problem is for particularly the new screenwriters who have to adhere to some kind of invisible rule set. Um, and the reason is because your screenplays can't be such an obstacle to read uh, when there's a whole list, uh, or rather a whole pile of screenplays to get through. The reader's got to have an easy read. The problem boils down to whose job is it to, let's say, ratify what the, let's say, screenwriting Bible should be. And then how do you get the big players, particularly, you know, you've got to think of Warner Brothers, Universal, um, Disney, etc., etc., how do you get them all to agree upon a, a given rule set? It's the same problem that the technology industry has when you have big phone companies where there is no agreement on connectivity. So you can't go to your friend's house and say, hey, can I just charge my phone on your uh, plug? And then discover that, well, his plug won't fit in your socket. No innuendos. So what it boils down to is just being intelligent and sensible about it. It's about writing with your reader in mind and making it easy for them without impacting your story. The story comes first, but ultimately you want a smooth read. So writing becomes about efficiency, fluidity, and consistency. So it comes down to the various services, keeping an eye on each other and understanding what we generally feel might be the current trend of what's being accepted by certain studios and taking that with a pinch of salt. Because of course, if someone's a well-known writer and coming up with a, a megabuck screenplay, you're gonna find that they've probably taken certain liberties that a new writer wouldn't be able to. But if you look at new writers whose scripts are getting through, perhaps you can get a sense of what's the current standard and what's acceptable. So we're beginning to see things like pictures, photos, illustrations on front pages. I personally would still veer away from that, just in case the person that sits in front of your screenplay happens to be more old school and thinks this is just a crazy new trend and then penalizes you for it. You've got to remember that at the end of the day, the readers, young or old, are human. And regardless of whether something seems fair or not, they may make really rash decisions on your screenplay based on the fact that they're tired, it's the end of the week, they've just read 
15 other screenplays that day and you've come up with something that's either obnoxious or pushing the trend a little too far or just repetitive mistakes. An example of something that's changed over the last couple of years is Fade In on page one of the screenplay. It's something that always used to appear at the very top. It kind of announced the beginning uh, and we're fading in and starting the movie. It's a given that after the title page, page one is the beginning. So a lot of people relaxed and stopped putting fade in. I personally don't penalize people if they've got it. If someone's pushing a page count and every line matters, I might remove it if I'm editing someone's screenplay. It's up to you whether you keep to it or not. But the point is, you know, with time, certain things have become assumed and, and fade in as one of those things that has gradually disappeared. As much as, you know, not everyone necessarily puts the end or fade out at the end, particularly if it's an obvious ending. Some people have relaxed with the amount of sounds and effects they might capitalize, you know, uppercase within their action and description. It's not that they're stopping altogether. Uh, it's more about essential sounds versus all sounds. Again, I don't think it's something that's going to be penalized if you happen to uppercase everything that's a sound or a prop. But I tend to go with the middle ground if your screenplay pages begin to look shouty text with lots of upper, uppercase, you can then begin to remove those less essential ones. Um, but again, you know, th there is no rule book. So it comes back to what I believe is sensibility and taking the middle ground. It's going to mean that different people submitted screenplays you know, when they're submitted to my service might take different uh, results on how they're corrected in terms of what sort of other mistakes they have. Uh, it's essentially about an individual screenplay being balanced to a comfortable standard where the reader can just get through it without being stumped and querying scene headings, confusion in action description, being stumped on a phone call, are we seeing both, you know, if things aren't clear. So clarity and consistency are really important. So for me, I will take a rule set that allows a balance and brings a better chance of that screenplay of being uh, considered. I saw my first screenplay back in the mid 90s when I was working for Warner Brothers. And I can say a lot's changed since then in the presentation and formatting and expectations on the page of a script. So where do these rules come from? Most are covered in, in, in some books, but they're not set in stone. They are, you know, that author's take on them. So for example, David Trottier's got his screenwriter's Bible, and a lot of that is through his experience in the industry and picking up on who he's worked with in the studios and networks that he's been in touch with as to what standards might be. But ultimately, it's not from the Board of Filmmaking Bible because it doesn't exist. Why doesn't it exist? simply because to get everybody to agree to something is one hurdle. You've got lots of big players. You know, you, you're going to have to get Warner Brothers agreeing with Disney and Paramount and Universal and now Netflix and Amazon. It's it's a big ask. Beyond that, it's it's who's the, what's the company? I mean, who's, who's the authority on this? Um, and who wants to poke their head above the parapet and say, okay, uh, let's establish some rules and everybody on me, it's, it's just not happening. So does that mean we have a free-for-all? Uh, the answer is no. Unfortunately, you've got to work out by yourself um, or through reading books and, and trawling the internet what these invisible rules might be. Or, of course, you come to a screenwriting service where you get your formatting looked at either after you've done your first draft or perhaps you get in touch beforehand. But either way, it's important to get an idea of what the general feeling is for how a script should be formatted. But at the end of the day, it's about providing something that is readable 
by your gatekeeper to the industry, and that's the Hollywood script reader. Um, it might be someone at a studio or with a network or with an agency, and they will, they're all going to have their own little nitpicking hang-ups. Uh, they're going to vary, but essentially there's a general trend. There's a, an obvious acceptance of screenplay elements, those being scene headings, action description, character headings, parentheticals and dialogue essentially as the principal ones pretty much gone are the days of necessitating the uh, dictation of transitions you know cut to um, fade out fade in those these days are only necessary if they're important to the story if there's something in your story that requires a definitive fade out before you fade in again for, for whatever reason that might be. But essentially, if you put those in a screenplay these days, most services are going to remove them simply because they know the director's going to want to make the choice himself. I think you want to be looking carefully, and I say this carefully in the sense of when you trawl the internet for scripts or if you subscribe to one of the services who give you uh, downloads to screenplays, you want to watch whether you're looking at a shooting script which is a script that's been through the story department at the studio or the production team as part of the director's uh, crew where they work out what they're going to do on set and they break your script apart and re-edit it into a shooting script. They introduce things like camera direction uh, and, and any special effects, etc. It's to enable the screenplay to be useful on set for the production team and director. Now those screenplays you see a lot available on the internet as downloads and they're misleading because you start reading and thinking, oh yeah, camera move does this or we see that. Those have been added as part of the shooting script and are not to be really in a spec script because the moment you talk about camera direction and we see, you're effectively telling the reader, yeah, you're reading an instruction set here. This is a script rather than a story. And you want your screenplay to read like a story. And that's because you want the reader to comfortably get through your, let's say it's a two-hour screenplay, two-hour script, 120-page screenplay. You want them to read through that and be engulfed in your world, whatever your story is, and come out the other side feeling that they've just been told a story. And for that to happen, it's got to be smooth and uninterrupted, which means they can't be stumbling across mistakes, for one, or anything that doesn't make sense. Something confusing about how a phone call is set out or whether it's just mistakes in, screen he in, in scene headings. That kind of thing just trips them up and ruins the, the feel of the story. Because you want them to fall in love with your story and pass it up the chain, saying this is a story worth telling. So if you're unconfident with how you've written your first draft and whether things are hitting the mark in terms of general expected uh, screenplay rule sets as the current trends are, then look to a screenplay service, editing and formatting service specifically, whereby the guys who generally are closer to the rule set will have an idea as to how to correct your work. Screenplay editorial services are day in and day out looking at scripts and have a history as well. So the knowledge there is that much closer to what the expectations are and presenting a script that's readable for the Hollywood reader. When you're writing your screenplay, hopefully you're really concentrating on the story and not worrying so much about the other elements because they, they can come later. And ultimately, when you get to your first or second draft and you've knuckled down your story and it's making sense, it's at that point that you want to be thinking about, right, are these elements set out right and how much am I on the mark? At that point, you may choose to reach out to screenplay editorial service and or someone to help with your formatting. It's very difficult to be worrying about your story at the same time as being concerned about the formatting and making sure you're hitting all the right marks with all the conventions. So it does pay to have a second pair of eyes to have a look at your screenplay and have these things 
smoothed out for you. So the closest thing to a rule book really is, is the industry reader and the teams of people that help people's scripts get prepared for that submission. So much like an accountant has a better idea of how your taxes should look for the taxman, in the same way, the screenplay services also have a better idea of how your script should look like for the Hollywood reader and for the industry. So it does pay to use their services because of their experience and turnover of reading people's screenplays. I hope this was useful. Get in touch if you need help with your screenplay to give it a better chance of success. Thanks for watching.